Hello and welcome to the big picture. One of the most unregulated sectors, despite it being most in demand in the country, has been the real estate sector. For years, home buyers have been the most exploited lot with flats and houses never delivered on time, people's hard-earned money many, many times going down the drain, cheated by the builders and multiple other problems. All that is now supposed to change. The Union Cabinet has approved the Real Estate Regulation and Development Bill, which was originally brought in by the UPA government in 2013. The present approved bill has some amendments to the original bill. The bill seeks to create a real estate regulatory authority apart from other measures. One of the major amendments to the original law is that the new law will include not just residential properties for regulation, but also the commercial properties. The various measures suggested in the bill, which is aimed at protecting the rights of home buyers and commercial building investors, is also expected to boost both domestic and foreign investments in the sector. The bill is expected to be moved in the forthcoming session of the parliament. We will look at the benefits of this new law when it comes into force and whether there are any lacunae still. To discuss this, I have with me M. Ramachandran, former Secretary, Ministry of Urban Development, Government of India, Brigadier R. R. Singh, Director General, National Real Estate Development Council, Dr. Surat Singh, lawyer in the Supreme Court who deals with real estate matters, and Sri Ram Khanna, Managing Editor, Consumer Voice. Welcome to all of you. Mr. Ramchandran, you think that uh, in the present form in which the bill has been approved by the Cabinet is a satisfactory bill? Uh, I may not be able to fully comment on that unless so I've whatever seen the, you have seen there, uh, unless I've seen the full text. Yes. But I think I, I, I will always believe this is a welcome step because the consumer wanted a proper platform uh, when they have a problem. And um, I, I'm sure you all noticed that it, this has been going on for some years now. Yes. So one hopes that it becomes a law uh, at least during the forthcoming session. And to that extent, it will be a great relief to the home buyers particularly. Uh, though the commercial buildings also have been included, I am more concerned or more, more, more satisfied about the relief which the home buyers are likely to get. No, but why, do, why has it taken so long for this country to come out with some kind of a regulation? I mean, it's been years since people have been exploited and people, many people have lost all their livelihood, uh, livelihood earnings. I'm, I'm, I'm also a bit lost, probably you will next ask me this since you have been also part of the policy making scheme of things, why did it take time? Yes, so I, can, I, can, I, can, I, can, I can only say that one, one tried one's best to push it at different stages, but then it's not an individual alone, no? it's, it's the system. So the system has to be ready to take it up for consideration. Was the system approach. resistant to this kind of a thing? Uh, outwardly, no, but I don't know whether there were other factors working behind the scenes which would have delayed this process. Uh, we had any number of discussions and it was fine-tuned, it was all kept ready. It could have gone through as a legislation at that time also some years back, I'm talking about some years back, but it has not happened. Uh, probably the consultation process required some more efforts, which I think has been done now. And now that the Parliamentary Standing mm -hmm. Committee has looked at it and they have heard the viewpoints of different sections who are affected, who would be benefited, I suppose what has come in the final shape now should be acceptable to everyone. And I do hope the legislation has a smooth sailing in the, in the, in the, in the two the houses. Yeah. Mr. Sri Ram Kanna, yeah. why, why, why do you think it took such a long time? See, uh, I remember uh, our attending a consultative meeting in the Ministry of Urban Development when uh, my colleague here was the secretary. And uh, we could see a lot of resistance from the builders' lobby, which was active over time. They tried their best to kill this bill, but the ministers, successive ministers who dealt with this subject were not willing to let it fall. And I think most of the time was spent in winning them over having a dialogue with them, taking their suggestions. And, and it went to one extreme by which, you know, what they did was they took out the commercial properties from the purview of the bill to make it more acceptable right. to, the, to the builder's lobby. Right. And it took four years or five years before the first version actually reached the parliament, 2008, 9 to 2013. 13. And then it went, because it was introduced in the Rajya Sabha, it went to the standing committee. Right. And when we appeared before the standing committee of parliament, which was headed by... Uh, uh, Mr. Sharad Yadav, the Member of Parliament in Rajya Sabha. We found that he was very active in understanding and the builders still had some grievances. And it was at this stage we said, look, you want to cover the residential houses? Are people not buying commercial flats and shops, etc.? Many, Why many should they be subjected to unfair methods? Exactly. Why should only those who are buying houses be, be, be protected? There should be equal protection of the law as per the Constitution. I think the committee saw through that and they 
recommend it that commercial property should also be covered and i am glad to note that yesterday's decision of the cabinet has incorporated that amendment yes that was which was not there in the 2013 yes uh, yes uh, brigadier singh how, how do you look at these amendments do you think that, that it will satisfy because this is something as mr khanna was pointing out and as mr ramchandran also was pointing out there has been a lot of resistance to this kind of a law coming into force so finally are the you think the the builders the real estate um people will be satisfied uh, with this i think the builders will be satisfied they have to be satisfied rather once the bill comes through and uh, there are many good issues because this takes the takes care of builders uh, issues also not that what were the builders issues uh, builders issue like timely payment from the uh, buyers buyers uh, in, always pay timely the no, problem there are many, always there, there are many cases <laughs> yeah. where the people do not buy in between they surrender or there are many fly by night uh, you no know, buyers also who come like only, fly by night builders like uh, fly by night I'm builders sure there they a lot of fly by night builders to, they only come to gain uh, like they book the 10 flats 20 flats and all that and in between up 10 days 15 days 3 6 months time they sell off and go out so there are those type all type of people are there so by and large i think this covers the interest of builders as well as the consumers consumers so bill is good and i think it should be acceptable to the developers except certain issues which are there like uh, no one of the main issues hurts the builders is 50% deposit in the special account i think that was earlier 70 and now it has been made 70 50. now it has been brought down to 70 what no, the builders has, what the builders has suggested you keep what is the cost of construction because the aim is to keep the cost of construction intact so that if there is any problem that money can be utilized to construct the project so you see if you are constructing a project in mumbai probably the land cost is 80% 90% of the total cost of the buildings if you are constructing in a rural area probably it is 10% 20% of the uh, is the land cost so in mumbai you will be at a loss whereas in the rural area you are blocking the money of the 50% of the builders which could be utilized for something else no no I, so, I, sorry we have we are we have mr gitambar anand chairman and managing director of the ats infrastructure limited and he is also the national president of kridai uh, mr anand mr anand you think that this 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 bill which has been approved Hello, by the, you yeah mr you think that the bill which has been approved by the cabinet fulfills the requirements of the of the builder of you builders because you know as far as the consumers are concerned we'll come to that little later but i want to first find out what you builders feel about this first and foremost i would like to correct the fact that you know today anybody who builds a 200 square yard plot or a 500 square yard plot also calls him self a builder right yes. we people are into the business of real estate development so right. yeah so that's why the real estate development uh, 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 development act and bill but uh, what i would like to say is from the part of the uh, organization and association uh, see we have always as a, as an organization we have always welcomed a, a regulator and a regulatory bill but we wanted it to be very balanced and it should have you know we have our, our stance was that it should be more like a facilitator for both the customer as well as the developer right rather than be an impediment in the work of real estate development so having said that there are three or four points which need to be relooked at in the uh, so called uh, the, the bill which has been passed by the cabinet i'll just table them for you yes point number 1 is uh, see when i go to register my project we had asked for an automatic registration which they say is there in the bill so the bill says in 15 once i have registered in 15 days i can get a deemed registration now over here after this the bill says that i can only uh, start selling my project once i have logged in into the site of the regulator right. and for that i need a special password and login identity which will be given to me now that process should also be automatic point number 2 is it says that after i have filed my application 15 days it is a deemed approval where there is an issue i have just pointed it out which should be removed it should be an automatic generation of the login id after 15 days i am getting a deemed approval but my papers will be scrutinized and at a later date if found wanting then 
appropriate action will be taken. Now, in what we have always asked for is an online system with minimum human interface. Now, if the papers are going to be scrutinized, then what is the point of an online approval system? On an online approval system, you scan your approvals, the system accepts or rejects them, and that is it. So why should this concept of being scrutinized by a human interface be there? This should be removed. Okay. Point number three. Right. You, you see, there, there's another provision in the, there's another very serious provision in the bill which says that, uh, sorry, which says that the registration can be cancelled in an event of willful default. Now, it does not quantify or qualify willful default and what is willful. So, imagine this, that a project is already 80% complete, out of which 50% the customers have already bought into. And for some reason, which may or may not be justified, the person sitting in that position of authority decides to cancel the registration. What happens is that the project gets stopped there and then. The customer suffers, the developer suffers, all in all, it's a bad situation. So what we are saying is that let's do it in a democratic way. A show cause issue should be noticed if in case there's a complaint. Okay. There should be an uh, opportune <coughs> opportunity a fair opportunity to be heard and if still a case of uh, malified intent is found then please go ahead and cancel the registration okay mr. so this <coughs> also needs to be addressed okay mr anand i think all point, the points third point i would say is <coughs> yes you see the bill says hello yeah yeah please tell, continue hello yeah please continue rtdr you lost please I think we'll, uh, okay. we'll get yeah. back to Mr. Yeah. Anand. Yeah. Uh, would, would you like to yeah, respond like to what? React. You know, yeah. I would like, uh, I believe... No, because from what he, he was saying, from See, what I could make... See, points. He, he's, no, the first, all the points which he is making seems to be all, you know, questions of modalities and no, things no, like. I'd like to say, the first point they are making is based on a fear that here will be another authority to whom we have to pay to get our things done. <laughs> because these guys are paying the municipal authorities, they are paying the engineers... They are paying the municipalities. They are paying every damn Tom, Dick and Harry who is uh, concerned with the building industry. And that is the, the, the real that story. Is the, that they are fearing, here is another person we have to pay. <laughs> that is, he wants it automatically and we support him. Okay. I think as consumers, we will support them to say that it should be automatic and it should be, if, if there is a default, they should be given a hearing. You can't, you know, have, okay. have a dictat. Okay. Give, have, have no, no, let, me, let, me, let me get uh, uh, Mr. Suraj Singh, the lawyer, you know, there's Mr. Surat Singh, you, you know, you heard the builders, you heard the former Secretary of Urban Development and others here. Yes. You think that, you, you think that this, this, yes. this yes. bill, this bill which has been approved by the Union Cabinet as it stands now is something which is going to benefit the uh, home buyers to, to, a, to a large extent or do you think that there are still some problems left there? Grishi, when a law is made in India, it is always made with very good intentions and purposes. The object itself says that it will try to strike a balance between the interest of the allottees on the one hand and a fair treatment to builders also. But having the law on the book is one thing. Implementation in India from experience is quite another. And that's why when the gentleman said that building uh, builders are accustomed to pay this officer, that officer. That concern is still here because, uh, the, first of all, once you get it registered, and if the authority is not satisfied, or if there is a willful default, then in that case, it can be revoked. Now, of course, there is an opportunity. 30 days are given. It is not that it is revoked automatically. A notice is given for 30 days, so that part is addressed. My concern is, as Nani Palkiwala, famous lawyer, used to say, that whenever government makes a law, it is not that the power goes from big businessman to the common man. It goes to the bureaucrat. <laughs> from big businessman to the bureaucrat. Right. So common man remains the same. In this bill, my concern would be that do we have sufficient safeguards by which allottees for whose uh, interest this uh, primarily this regulation has been done, right. will really have access to that. So there should be more transparency in the system. There are more safeguards which are needed. Uh, and willful default, of course, is to be defined. 
and then I'll say that instead of taking the drastic uh, step of revocation of the license itself, there can be penalties which can be imposed as a okay. disincentive. Okay, Mr. Because Suraj Singh. Fine no. tuning which needs to be done. Mr. But Suraj Singh. On the whole, it's a welcome step. Mr. Suraj Singh, my question to you is this. You know, what, and as, as, as individuals, all of us have gone through this kind of trauma in life, Building a house, there's, there's a, I'm sure there's a proverb in, in every language in this country, building a house and getting, a per, getting somebody married in the house is the two biggest traumas which people face. Now, will that trauma of a person, of an individual <laughs> buying a house, flat, whatever it is, in the country going to be minimized? One, this regulation, this regulatory authority which is going to be set up, will it be able to take care of the, uh, uh, of the complaints which the people normally have had in this country? in this country while buying a house or building a house or uh, buying a flat? Well, uh, as, uh, uh, to the first question, Girichi, yes, now we have a framework. This entire real estate industry was in a total chaos. It right. was an anarchy. Right. Uh, 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 people selling. So, so to that extent, we have now a regulatory framework which defines the rights and duties of allotees as well as the builders. Right. As rightly said, now, allottees are also supposed to make the payment in time and builders are supposed to re register so that we know what projects are going on, what are the time frame, what stage they can get the payment. Uh, so all, all, all that is a welcome step. Whether the authority would be able to handle complaints, first of all, there is no time frame within which the complaint is to resolve. So it is very important that a time frame is fixed, either one month or maximum two months within which this, uh, these complaints are addressed. Otherwise, we would be duplicating the same system which in our ordinary judicial system we already have. Okay. So, now I would like to see that time frame is there. Okay. To resolve the problem. Brigadier Singh. Uh, I want to add to that is the one major problem in the real estate sector is project approvals. Right. Uh, that is the maximum time. It takes time more than sometimes constructing it on the ground. So that point has not been addressed in this bill but you, at all. You, no, but you, 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 as far as I could make out from the amendment, from the amendment which has been brought to this bill, project approvals. Unless and until the project is approved, you cannot sell the, uh, uh, you know, yes, these flats. That so is that, true. That is okay. Yes, but because now what, itself is, what is happening is. We, we have seen any number of cases where the land has not been you know, bought over by the, by the builder or the developer. Before that, they advertise and they... They, they have no plan approved, they, they have no land. Ah. They put ads, they collect money, ah. and then they start buying the land and then they start going to the approval. Will that, will that be a matter, matter of the past? No, what I am trying to bring out is, even if everything is fine, you put up a project for approval, approval process takes two to three years time to get the things on the ground. Start the project on the ground. Whereas it should not take more, more than, there's a lot of work being done by the ministry and the minister himself is involved now. He has had a discussion with all the other ministers. In, in Delhi, that is in the central government itself, there are four or five NOCs are required from defense, from aviation, from your archaeological survey of India, from, uh, from your firefighting, from your railways. So these things, everywhere it takes time. So you, you uh, Mr. Mr. Ramchandran, I, are these issues tackled in this bill at all? No. Uh, <coughs> you, I mean, it's uh, not tackled. It's no, not tackled. No, no, my first point is, it's a, po a progressive and a positive step. Whenever we discuss anything with the real estate developers, all these points come up. And these have been coming up on any number of occasions. I don't know whether the points raised by Brigadier Singh, those are the ones which are of the main concern as far as this particular bill is concerned. Exactly. This particular bill addresses a certain specific issue. This, the, and the, what, what and the specific to, issue is to, is to protect, protect the right to yes, 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 So that, that's, that's the focus here. Right. And whatever other issues there are, the real estate lobby has been giving expression to this. Any number of authorities would have heard it. And I suppose in these days of when we are moving towards a better governance system, more transparency, these are some of the things we should get addressed parallelly, but not as part of this legislation. Right. This legislation like is basically add, for people you know, yeah. who, who needed some sort of relief. One can always say that there was the Consumer Protection Act, but that was not, that as, was not enough. as one would have expected. Right. Also referring to some of the points raised here, 
what I read is there is a provision of within 60 days decision has to be given. Right. So there is a time bound nature. Right. Now the question is, if this authority is flooded with large number of um, grievances or uh, problems, will the authority be able to take a decision in 60 days? Because normally our pattern is these authorities are created and then large number of uh, cases come. They are just and not they... able to cope with that. So I hope the legislation also has a provision to have more than one bench or more than uh, more than uh, to have the authority at more than one place. I of course read for one or more than one state it could be combined. But what is also required is in very large states we may not be happy with one single authority, uh, authority only. We may or have, the tribunal. There's, we may, they were ah, talking right, about the tribunal also. Yeah, that's the next level. Right. We will have to have it on a regional basis so that it is accessible to people. And it gives relief immediately. But they, they, they are talking of, you know, in every state they will have some... No, a state is like state like and UP. UP, you need a bigger... Which, are, which yeah. is so large, yes. if you have only one authority Absolutely. sitting in Lagoon or Kanpur or so, Mr. it won't work. Mr. Kanna, what, you, you wanted to intervene. Yeah, what I want to say is that the problems that were mentioned about uh, delay in approvals, you, you first you go for an approval for a building plan. Then you get approvals under environment, etc. And it is common knowledge that this is done at the state level and every state government has its own authority and its own peculiar system of doing this. And at ev in most states, this is a process riddled with corruption because those who approve plans expect greasing of palms and it is one of the major causes of corruption in but governments the, okay. throughout the country. This but is that is belief. something I don't, I don't see this bill, this, this, this bill... Addressing, the, address. addressing that problem. No, this is a state subject. This is a state it subject. cannot be addressed by the central government. Mr. Gitambar Anand, you, you, you know, one of the, as Mr. Ramchandran was pointing out, the former urban development secretary, the, the scope of this bill seems to be to protect the rights of the consumers, essentially. The, you know, home buyers, or now since it has been, the commercial properties have also been included, people who are going to be investing in that. You think that the... That, that the developers and builders also, you know, you are, develop, you are a big developer, but there are a lot of small build, small time builders who really create a lot of problems for the people in this country. You think that that menace will end with this, with this regulatory authority coming into place? I think we have lost, lost him. him. Uh, Mr. 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 Suraj Singh, can you answer that, that, that question? Yes. Yes. Well, uh, as far as corruption part is concerned, of course, whenever we give power to anybody in India, that culture by which you exercise the power only for which it is given is yet to be developed. But it is certainly a progressive step because we have to start somewhere. As I earlier pointed out, there was a total chaos and anarchy in the area of real estate. So at least now we have some framework to work with. Of course, we can improve it with the, the passage of time, but there is another part that the land is still a subject of state, not of center. So if state authorities and state governments do not cooperate, then the entire venture might not succeed as we want. So we need to have a uniformity in that also, and that's a big challenge. And no, but of course, how we make these approvals as smooth and transparent as possible, online thing it's a good idea. Mr. Anand said uh, something uh, very crucially important, that if it's an online system, then as far as possible, it should be approved or not approved on the system itself, instead of any human intervention. Because whenever you give power of human intervention, likelihood of abuse cannot be ruled out. Mr. Mr. So, Suraj Singh. So that is to be... Mr. Suraj Singh, Suraj Singh coming back to... idea is... Yes. Mr. Suraj Singh coming... idea is that the housing industry should... Uh, uh, Mr. Suraj Singh, coming like back to the rather than really uh, handicapped by it. Mr. Suraj yes. Singh, coming back to the interests of the buyers, the home buyers, and you know especially we have seen yes. thousands of them even in NCR, and I'm sure it is the case all over the country suffering because of the lack of the delays which have which right. have been caused and things like that, and we and home buyers never get compensated for the delays, whereas a home buyer, if he delays payments, has to has to you know has always has to pay through 18%, his nose with 18% uh, to 24% 24% interest. You Absolutely. think that is something Absolutely. which has been taken that's care right. of in here? That's right. Has that issue been that taken care of? That certainly has been taken care of because that, that has been taken care of because the project is to be registered and a time frame is to be given. 
and if the project is not done within time then even the uh, the, the, the registration itself can be revoked and even government and can take over remaining of the project compensation is also so payable part putting a pressure okay and compensation is also there so that part is very effectively addressed over there but then there is a fraud also sometimes builder do not have the license do not have even the plot and they keep on advertising no, that is no, that, is, that, that is exactly that that, that all the advertisement <coughs> no no but unfair, mr unfair mr surat saying no, mr are also ah. also also banned okay also yes. banned okay yeah. mr brigadier singh one of the every every week we see the major newspaper has its own real estate supplements there every week new projects are being you know announced we don't know the the day and it all looks very rosy and for a for a for a home buyer is will that be put an end will, can can, me... can can the buyer can can a ordinary buyer now when he sees an advertisement in a newspaper after this regulatory uh, framework comes into place can he be can he be uh, assured that this is something which has passed through the yes uh, to a large extent because everything has been done before you register that is you have the land with you you have the all plans approval noc etc everything in your hand before you advertise so before you uh, register with the authority authority huh? so it means everything has been done everything is clear so buyer has no risk thereafter so it is a very good thing as per the buyer is concerned mr ramchandran I would think there is a certain amount of consumer awareness also which has to go with this because yes. when when it's a rosy picture we all tend to go for that. Yes. See, even now what is happening is the issues about carpet area, floor area, and that area, seems to cover, have been addressed by this bill. Covered area. Yes. This, this used to lead to confusion. Right. And this is where changes used to be made. I mean, I I think of getting a certain size house. Ultimately, what you I land up with only three fourth three fourth of that. So probably there is a reference to that. Right. so consumer education becomes important because i should go in for a registration only if i see that they have registered with the authority and and they have got the proper registration number or whatever they should be there was another point about uh, see the the act would be there it will be followed by the rules yes so there is a rule making which has to happen which in one be, year's time yes now it is man, many of these aspects need to be addressed at the rule at making the rule stage right. so that it becomes easy to handle and it becomes convenient but i would once again emphasize this point about along with all this consumers have to be educated as to this is what you have to look for when you apply for a house and this is the relief you have you have as a means of this legislation that if you have a problem this is how you should go about doing M it mr kana very quickly yeah. because you know now the same question which i now can can a consumer can a home buyer be assured after this whole thing comes into See, place let me put it like this the home buy the level of protection given to prospective buyers of houses or commercial properties in this bill. will be increased yes if this bill is passed in both houses of parliament that is one secondly i like to say there is a, there is some protection even today in the written law but in actual practice you file a case against a builder at the district level it'll take 5 or 6 years yes. in the district level then you win he appeals another 5 or 6 years in the state level and by the time the final judgment comes is 20 years no no but now will but that problem be resolved in here in my view because of the authority under the bill to settle disputes between builders and, and buyers and there's a time for it are being going to be set up so i believe that it will be a quicker way today if i go to the national consumer court no, it, it takes 12 years to decide right. a case but is there a, is there a time frame here for resolution Mr. i think it will going to be much quicker than the consumer court this so is my feeling one has read there is a 60 days limit okay. but whether it will really be practical okay. that's that something mr surat singh huh? is is there is there that kind of a protection for the okay, for the home buyers is is there a time frame time limit to 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 decide the cases yes in fact the dispute between home owners and uh, and builders allotees also uh, that is to be referred to this regulation authority and as rightly pointed out 60 days are there but my experience is that the uh, these tribunal are flooded by so many cases that the, it is okay. very much difficult to completed within 60 days okay okay sir so, uh, so what i would suggest as they do in america and europe mm. let there be more authorities on the more, same time okay line. so okay okay sir we are completely run out of every, time every sorry we are completely run out of time but th there is some we are completely run out of brigade singh sorry uh, but there is hope for the home buyers and we hope that the parliament will pass this bill and whatever is necessary to set up a regulatory authority in as quick a time as possible will be done 
we'll keep we'll wait and watch how it'll all work out thanks to all my guests please keep watching we'll come back with another issue big picture same time tomorrow